What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Checkerboard Podcast, and this is episode number 40. So we're hitting, we hit a little bit of a milestone, guys. So thanks for sticking around for 40 episodes of the Checkerboard Podcast. And I'm joined with fucking Alex. What's good? And fucking Liam. Hey, what's up? Uh, Jordan, so like, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah Jordan. Jordan is once right again now. not here. Um, he might I'll show get, up. He may show up in the middle of this episode. I can't say for certain. He might show up, but we'll have to see. But he is out doing shit right now. Um, and maybe maybe he'll show up. But we got we've got an interesting episode today. Um, I mean I'm sure you guys can see by the title and like, you know the fucking person in the picture here, who we we're gonna be talking about. But we're, that's gonna be later on, because for now. I have a fun little story I'd love to tell that I've already kind of told these guys, but man, this is this is an interesting one. So, for those of you who aren't aware, I, I obviously am a huge fucking fan of anime, but I also really love anime, like, clothing, like, anime streetwear, just, like, graphics, all that kind of shit. I, I really got into it, especially from Liam. Liam fucking definitely inspired me on that one. And he got me into a bunch of these brands. And one of them is the one that we're going to be talking about for a little bit today. Um, and that brand is called SoraClothing.ca. They're a Canadian brand. There's, I want to see, they call themselves a small business, but like, Gunner, we were literally looking how many followers they have. They have like half a fucking million people, which I mean, yeah, they I have guess. 450K on TikTok. I guess that's, that's still somewhat smaller if you're comparing it to like mainstream brands but i still think that's kind of big like like wouldn't you guys agree it's kind of big i see the the thing is is that i can compare that to other other clothing brands that have that kind of following um and they perform better which i mean we'll also get into that as well but like i don't think it's an i don't think that them being a quote-unquote small brand is an excuse because if if you are, I don't know. Well, I don't want to get too much into the actual itch issue, but I would say that they're 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 big enough. Yeah, they're they're big enough. They're out of like the like. Actually, wait. Let me check the one brand. Let me check the one brand. Cause the one brand I don't want to say that for. I think this other brand is definitely bigger. Um. Oh wait, are they? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I was gonna say out of the brands that I've personally bought from. Sora is either the biggest or the second biggest brand when it comes to anime merchandise that I've bought from. And I've bought them from four different brands that are, like, smaller ones. Um, the smallest probably being Minamaru, which, as you guys know, he was on the podcast. Very cool dude. Very good brand. I personally really like it. Simple stuff. Um, the second smallest, I would say, is this brand that I actually just got these shorts from today called Animato. Um, his stuff is pretty nice. Like, Liam, don't you have a few things from him? Or, like, at least yeah, one? Yeah, I have... I have a hoodie from him that I think is genuinely like the coolest hoodie that I own by a country mile. And he's, he's like probably the second smallest. Um, and then you got Sora and then I don't, like I said, I don't know if they would be higher or not, but some slight. So I feel like some slight might be bigger, honestly. Some, some slights definitely bigger than Sora, but that's also, they only got as big as they did because they genuinely have their shit together. Yeah. Um, so you guys are probably wondering, like, what's, what's going on with the Sora brand? Like, why are we, you know, what, what are we talking about with it? So Sora is, like I said, a pretty cool brand. They have these really unique designs for their clothes where they really like, how do you even say it, Liam? Like, I, I feel like they do something different from a lot of other brands where it's like, they make it minimalistic, but they also like add some kind of flair to like the kind of stuff. You know what I mean? It, like, it reminds me a lot of Japanese streetwear. That's what I would say the best way to describe their clothing is. It's a very, like, uh... It's the kind of shit that, like... It's like, oh... And this is not to an insult their product, because I like their product. But they're the kind of people that add zippers and pockets and, like, that kind of... It's that kind of... That kind of thing. Like, uh... But it does look very good, I will say. Like, that's not me insulting them, but, like, you know, it's very, like, uh accessory base like it's not just clothing there's like there's stuff on it like there's a lot of um and that, their clothing like has heavy finesse. personality yeah a lot of personality and you know they stand out yeah so it's by no means like bad merchandise at all 
Um, which is that's the reason why this honestly really upsets me. Um, so let's let's get into it. So they usually do drops. I want to say like once every two weeks, if not like I don't know, maybe every week. No, no, I think it's gonna be like every other week, something like that, right, Liam? Would that what you'd say? Because I feel like it's pretty bi- frequently. I'd say bi-weekly, if not twice a month. Yeah, so somewhere around there. Um, they'll do new releases or they'll do restocks. And the restock is the main thing that really just kind of like upset me today. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm I'm taking way too long to get to the point. So back in November, I ordered a pair of cargo pants from them that are definite inspired. So what it is is it has like. Ryuk's hand holding an apple on it, and it's got like a chain that's got like the Death Note on it. Um, it just it just looks really cool. It's like very unique, and I have a few Death Note shirts, and I'm like, okay, I would totally fucking wear this as a combo with some of my shirts I have. So I ordered it, and the previous time I had ordered from them, I ordered a JoJo's hoodie, and you guys might have seen that like either in videos or like on some posts I've made, and that hoodie came in and. It definitely is very comfortable. I have no complaints of how it feels. It's more so the designs on it. Um, so on the sleeves, they reversed the way the like the design should be on, like the ones that should be on the left sleeve or on the right sleeve, and then vice versa. But oh, also, no. but also the other thing is for like things like the mask from Phantom Blood. Um, for some reason, they filled in like the eye holes, the mouth hole. Um, and, like, I think there's, like, a flower or something in the top right of the mask. I don't know what it is, but... Anyway, th- th- it's not really important, but, like, you can't really tell, like, what it is from, like, a distance. Like, it just looks like a black oval or something. It's kind of hard to tell what it is. And so that kind of pissed me off, and I told them, like, hey, this is not how I imagined it would be. It doesn't... It didn't... I, as far as I'm aware, I did not see anything in there that said, hey... This is going to be a lot different from the one that we're showing off here. Like, this is going to be slightly different of, like, the designs. As far as as far as far I'm aware, they did not disclose that anywhere. So, I'm like, okay, that mm-hmm. kind of upsets me. Um, fast yeah, forward... If they, did, it was, if they did, it was, like, a quick little, like, story thing. Um, but, yeah, no, they never, like... It wasn't... This is something that, if, you're gonna, if it's going to be this... I don't want to say major of an issue... But something that is a bit of a drastic change, or what seems to be a manufacturer uh, mishap, they should have said something about that in a post. Like that's not something you post on a story. Yeah, they should have taken like, accountability, you... bro. Yeah, they should have made a post about it that like like was like, hey, it's got this issue. Um, just letting you guys know. Again, they may have posted it on a story. I'm not gonna say that they didn't because obviously I wouldn't know that because I also ordered one of these and I have the same thing that happened. Um, but, um, like if that, if that is the case, make a literal post about it so that there's no, you know, so people can verify and be like, oh, okay. So this is what I need to expect because if they would have made a post about it, I would have felt a lot less like I would have, I probably would have been a lot more willing to take it. Like, and I'm still not that annoyed about this, but it's, it's one of those things where it just seems kind of scummy. Or no, ignorant. You feel cheated, bro. You feel yeah. cheated, bro. Yeah, it it's a little bit annoying if you ask me. I just I don't really feel like I was asking that much. It's like mm-hmm. the whole thing. Like I, I just wanted like my how it was supposed to look. Um I'm looking on like my emails really quick to see what they originally said. Because I feel like I asked them about it. Um where is it at here? Yeah, I emailed them. And I pretty much said... Okay, okay, here it is, here it is. I was like, hey, this is different from the one that I got. Like, what's going on? And so they replied in the support email. They said, hey there, unfortunately this is the final product as we change the details as on the icons to be the same color as... Wait, what? This is the final product as we change the details on the icons to be the same color... And reverse them on the sleeves. And I, I don't know. They didn't disclose that as far as I'm aware anywhere. And so that was kind of annoying. Um, but I don't know. That was the issues I had with that. Eventually I got in. Like I said, it's comfortable. Can't really complain much aside from those little details. So I don't know. Not the end of the world that. 
But the thing that really pissed me off that I keep building up to and I just keep sidetracking. Um, so these these Death Note cargo jeans that I ordered, I ordered them on November 25th of 2023, which we are now in February of 2024, and the 35 business days that they tell you about is long overdue. We are sitting at 60 business days. I did the math already. It's 60 business days, and I still am waiting for them. I haven't fucking gotten them. I got really pissed last week, and I fucking sent them an email because in the Discord server, um, one of the owners, or at least I'm assuming he's an owner, his name is Leo, he was pretty much saying, mm-hmm. oh yeah, um, they should be getting here next week, they should be getting here next week. And I've been hearing that since, like, probably end of January, that I think I've been hearing that, so... Yeah. All oh, the way you wanna, three or four you weeks ago. You want to know something that's crazy as well, to kind of add into this, so... I ordered a hoodie from them back in November as well. And I've been like harassing them about it like frequently, just saying, like, can I just get like an update? Like, you don't have to tell me it's shipping tomorrow. I just want to know what's happening. Like, why why is this taking so long? And so I talked to them about it and they're like, Oh yeah, we just need it to come into here. Um, and uh, whatever. And I'm like, okay, well, is there like a time frame or anything like that? And I just got radio silence. And then Damn, bro. I, see I literally I checked in. So my local post office has like this app that, or I guess just USPS. I don't. I, that's like a nationwide thing, so I guess I can say that. Um, but uh, USPS has like an app that like you can check to see when you have packages coming in. So so my hoodie is my after like it, what we're looking at like four months or three months now, almost four months now since I've ordered it. Sora never even sent out a shipping confirmation. It's just it's just on its way here. I had to like because I checked and I'm like, wait, what package am I getting tomorrow or on Monday? Um, and I looked at it and I looked at the address and I'm like, that's that's the Sora manufacturing facility. So they finally they finally shipped it out, which like great for them. But they never even get. I never got an email. I got no email that my my hoodie that I ordered four months ago finally shipped out when I've also been like harassing them about this. Like it's just it's so bizarre. I swear this company's run by like like 17 and 16 year olds who just don't know anything about how to have like proper business etiquette it's it's just it's so bizarre yeah it it really is bizarre to me to be honest and like i said i i went and i said in there or i went and i fucking emailed them i said hey like this is getting ridiculous. I really love you guys' brand, but I'm just really not wanting to buy from you guys now. If you guys are just not gonna fucking give me any like information on delays or anything like that. So, um, the person responds back and they say, "Oh, we're so sorry. We're we're still a small company. Uh, we're trying to get them here." Yo, bitch ass up, boys. They should be Bro, here. Sweetest chef out here. Oh my god. They should be here in the fourth week of february and i'm like okay i'll trust your word on it but if it's not here i honestly am just tempted to ask him for a refund at this point because it's getting frustrating dude no no shot they say oh it's the leap year we meant fifth week <laughs> although the, and there's Bruh, not even that's fifth week of february i would lose i would lose my mind if that's actually what they did but anyway yeah so i went dirty 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 i went bro, if that happens we're gonna have to make an exposed video bro bro i might so have watch to watch out watch out bro i'm gonna have to bring back the exposed oh. videos for this one bro <laughs> but yeah so yeah what moist critical help us expose this guy <laughs> yeah bro 20, 2017 <laughs> type shit so like i said i'm still waiting for the tracking haven't gotten anything um i have a um i have this app called shop and it pretty much lets me know whenever like anything that i order comes in anything like that or like it when it ships out still nothing still nothing so really nice but anyway the thing that really ultimately grinded my gears and the reason why we're talking about this today is because like i said obviously i've been waiting for my thing um but then i went on the discord server and i noticed something they have a like they have a channel that pretty much promotes like any of their TikToks they post or anything like that. And so I was like, oh, let's just, let me check it. Let me see what they've been posting recently. I don't know. I just, yeah, I was checking their socials. First, one of the first things I see is this TikTok with the Death Note joggers on it. The ones that I've been waiting for for months. 
And it's, like, this main girl that I guess they use to promote most of her shit. I don't know if she's, like, an owner or if she's just, like, a model or what her deal is in it. I think, I think she's one of the owners, I'm very certain. Um, but yeah, so, she's, like, wearing it, and it says on the caption of the video, Should we restock the Death Note pants? And today, lo and behold, they fucking restocked all the shit. Yeah, that's how I fucking felt. I don't know who used that sound. <laughs> But yeah, that's pretty fucking Bro, that was to me. how I felt like when I saw that. I felt fucking, I was so pissed because, dude, how are you gonna restock oh something? God, bro. Oh hell no! How are you gonna restock something and just not even fucking have it been shipped out, like, for the people who ordered the first batch? Like that makes zero fucking sense to me. What? Like, I I genuinely don't know what the thought process is there. I I don't. I really don't like I think would... I think that I could understand see because like the thing is I don't think that a company should necessarily be like discouraged and, and I know that, that this isn't what you're doing default but like I don't think that a company should be discouraged from wanting to restock something like that is totally understandable but have some professionalism here say there's a restock coming soon and get one thing organized get one thing figured out um and or just la- whether or not you have the product in hand, just label it as a pre-order for a restock or some shit like that. Because the other thing is too, is that um, the first their philosophy, right, is that if you're one of the first one, they stock 100 of everything when they do a restock. They they stock 100 of each item, and if you're one of the first 100 to buy it, uh, which first of all, if because this is the other thing too to like kind of prove that they're not really like a small company, um is that if you are selling a hundred of a product in less than an hour, because me and me and uh me and Alex, when we ordered that uh that hoodie, I ordered like five minutes before him. I got my hoodie in in a week. Mine shipped the same day. And then his took six months to ship. So like they sell 100 product very quickly. So they're not that small. Like that's an impressive feat for a clothing company to do is sell a hundred product that quickly. Um, especially if multiple products, like they, they stock a hundred of a lot of things when they stock product. And so they had a hundred of these on hand to ship out and they're still haven't shipped out Alex's, which is just, it's just, it's so weird. I don't get the, I don't get the practice. Fucking, they sold more than they had, bro. And they're like, well, yeah, but they had to have a hundred more for their release because they, 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 I saw shipping receipts. I think they posted shipping receipts on their story. I'd have to double check that, but I'm pretty sure I saw that because they always keep a hundred of, of uh, an item in stock when they do an initial release. And then if you're not one of the first 100, you're put in back order for it to ship out later. So they literally catered to these 100 people who bought these pants that Alex got today, as opposed to Alex who bought them three months ago because he wasn't one of the first 100 for today, but he ordered them months ago. Like they have this really weird backwards logic. It's just it's so bizarre. I don't know why you think they would you do, the do this. That bottom first, first, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And again, ma- people that were in line first. It yeah. It's it's such a it's such a weird practice. Like I don't think that there's anything even wrong with that. Like you know having some stock and then having it go into pre order. But like this whole re release thing is just it's it's nonsensical. I don't get I don't get the business practice. Like I the I'm not seeing the business model. Maybe maybe my glasses aren't on. Maybe I'm not hi- hi- See, I'm not in with these young hipsters, but like I'm in business. Like I work in business and I don't I don't see this. I don't understand what they're cooking. See, I would understand if they restock these like maybe like 6 months, like half a year later than like their original drop. But like this is it's been like 3 months or like 3 to 4 months. Like yeah, they, they haven't even gotten their first part. They haven't even gotten their shit together. Yeah, the they first haven't even gotten release. their shit out to people like me who literally ordered from the original release. Like, what the fuck do you mean you're restocking it? So, I got fucking pissed, and I told I told my girlfriend, and I think I might have told Liam. I was like, I'm making a fucking TikTok, dude. I don't give a shit. I'm making a TikTok, and I'm calling them out because this is fucking bullshit. So that's what I did. I made a TikTok. And it's fucking blowing up, which I'm really surprised about because I genuinely have not really had TikToks like blow up aside from like one that I made like a year or two ago when Stranger Things was going on. But yeah, it fucking blew up and I think it's got like just as many views as theirs. 
like as like this TikTok that they posted, it's like, should we restock restock the Death Note pants? Well, okay. To be to be fair, like on on my life, it was a very well put together video. Like not just not just trying to like you know glaze. Not 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 here to default glaze. But it was a very well put together video, so it makes sense. Yeah. So it. I fucking put together that video, and I tried to make sure I was really compelling of all the shit with it, and, dude, yeah, a lot of people were, like, on my side. I was honestly really shocked. Um, at first when I posted it, there's this one Nimrod that fucking went in the comment section is like, hey, yeah. um, what do you, oh what do you expect when you ordered something online and from the TikTok store? Like, how stupid can you be? And I'm like, um... <laughs> Well, first off, dumbass, when did I say I bought it from the TikTok store? That's your first mistake. Your second mistake is, what the fuck do you mean, like, this is what happens when you buy shit online? Like, dumbass, did you not live through the whole fucking pandemic we had in 2020? Like, you're not telling me you just sat there in the pandemic and fucking did nothing. Like, no fucking way you're saying this. Like, we get it, you're fucking Fred Flintstone. Like, get your ass out of here. And what's funny is, like, all of you who are viewing my TikTok were all fucking, like, everyone did their part in fucking flaming this guy in the comment section. It was so hilarious. And I ended up making a video calling him pretty much, like, a bozo for what he said. And then he deleted all the comments, like, probably, like, half an hour ago. So that was kind of funny. But, um, more importantly, though, I actually got to Sora via that TikTok. And how did they respond? How do you, how do you guys think... Sora responded because I mean, oh sure, surely it was a well constructed, well thought out, and sincere apology addressing how they have completely mishandled the situation as a company and look like total buffoons. They went and they said, surely it wasn't corporate response, right, guys? Like, come on, it wasn't a corporate response, right, guys? Of course, they hit me with the corporate response. They said, "We apologize for your unpleasant experience and our delays, or and our delays." Sorry. Uh, we've ran into problems, but they will be shipped out soon. Once again, we apologize. Um, you can keep apologizing, but that's not gonna make my fucking, like, pants get here any sooner. Like, and also, you can apologize all you want, but actions speak lo louder than fucking words, Sora. Like, I love your guys' brand, but, like, you guys just not fucking giving people, you know, like, updates or anything on, like, delays is just so kind of, like, I don't know. Like, how can you say you're a small brand and then, like, somehow just not be able to put on your story, like, hey guys, there's been a delay with this drop, um, this sh it should take this long to get here, blah blah blah. Like, I've seen other brands that are a lot smaller than Sora at least do that. Like, Minamaru, I know 100% have do has done that before. I know Animato has done that before. Yeah, I was actually, I was literally gonna talk about Animato, so when I ordered... See, because you should think about Animato. So his process is that, like, he's like, okay, I come up with with one design, I make one hoodie, I take pictures of me or models in it, um, and then uh, you pre-order it, and then it ships. Uh, hit, what he tells you is it ships as soon as it's made. So you have absolutely no expectation in your mind. When I bought my Berserk hoodie, I was like, okay, cool. The cool thing about his, one, his recent One Piece drop was that he made specific quantities of each size so he could ship them out immediately and he was like okay if it if you buy it it's sold out he didn't do this weird thing that sora did where it's like oh it's like we have a hundred of it in stock but it goes in the back order and then you could do it like it's so messy it's so messy so i like animato uh and i don't really know how to pronounce it animito animato whatever um uh his Mario. process with this but uh with the berserk hoodie what he did was he was just like, okay, so it's going to take, it, it's just going to take time. I don't know how long it's going to take, but just know that when you're buying this hoodie, you're also going to be waiting for however long this process takes. Now, I completely understand that because this hoodie is like, very has complex. layers. It's very complex. Um, It's not like just like, a, it looks like it's armor. Like it looks like night armor. Hang on. Let me, uh. Let me see if I can find a. Eh, I don't really know if it's going to be an easy thing to find. If I can find a picture of a gunner, I'll send it. In, I'll send it in the uh, podcast okay. chat eventually. But it's got like these, like, like it kind of like how um how medieval armor will have like metal stacked over metal, like these. It's almost like it's kind of like a dragon scale stack. The hoodie does that, kind of like guts's armor from Berserk. 
And so it's like really detailed. The embroidery is phenomenal. There's just, there's so many intricate details about the hoodie. And so I understand why it took time, but he also didn't promise me a date. He didn't say anything. Their guarantee, Sora's guarantee is that it ships, I think, 30 to like 30 days. It's 35 after. business days. 35 business days after. And I've never ever had something ship 35 business days after. That wasn't something that I bought that was actually in stock. Um, so, and then what they did is every single time, so they were like, okay, the manufacturer has bought the product. They got the hoodies in. They just got to embroider them. And then I got another story update. Okay. Um, uh, hey guys, uh, the embroidery is done. They're shipping over to me. I got them all. I got to process these. I got to package these and they're coming your way. And then he would give me, a, he would send another one. Like every single month we'd have updates where the order is he'd say oh hey guys hate to break this to you but there's been a delay like i was always in the know-how so even though it took me four months to get my berserk hoodie the same time that it's taking me to get this hoodie from sora i knew what was going on the entire time and i commend him for that because he's also a solo act so like if sora wants to say that this is a problem because they're a small company this is a solo act. He is also doing this by himself. He obviously has manufacturers. He has people who make the hoodies and the t-shirts and make them in bulk. But he is a solo act. He is the person who packages these. And I'm sure he gets help. And there's actually, there's another company that's really small and that I think takes a while and also does better with this stuff as well. They're called Lavish Media Designs. Um, I actually oh, did I like a little him. bit of a, yeah, he's the guy that made my Donkey Kong shirt. Oh, that's right. And, yeah, that's him. And his philosophy is that like literally all, like all it is, is you, he has on his website, he has a bunch of his embroideries that he has saved and you basically, you buy the product and then you're put in a line. Um, he does like, he literally like goes in eight to five and does as many things as he possibly can in one day and he's like if i get to your hoodie that's when i get to your hoodie but you have like a receipt that lets you know how like how many hoodies are between you and when you're done so i it took me like two months to get it but once i got it i knew like you know i always knew when it was coming like when i was gonna get it roughly and i was always in the know-how and I think that, see, here's the big thing. Here is the big thing with Sora. And, I, and like, you know, if they want to claim that they're a small company, that's fine. But if you are a small company, it means it should be easier to manage your product and easier to communicate what's going on with your product and your business to your customers. If you want to make that claim, that's fine. I'll believe you. But then it should be really easy to be open and honest. I should not have to email the, a small company about my you know my my hoodie or alex's pants or whatever like they should be updating these kind of things so that people don't have to ask these questions because it's a small community if that's what they want to say that this is i think that they're not being very accommodating they have a great team that work toward that like you know is working towards their new releases and new products that they have out and that's fine but they should also have a team that's dedicated to informing people about what uh, what they're behind on, what they are missing, what is to like what what the past orders are looking like right now. Because they don't really have a team that does that. Like in their Discord server, it's like random people who don't even work for Sora that are like, "Oh, hey, I just got an email. Apparently, this is what's going on." Like I literally got more information about Sora's clothing from fellow customers than I have from the actual owners and representatives of the company itself and it, it's just sad like it just seems like it's run by 17 and 16 year olds yeah it's it's fucking crazy dude it it really is um but what, what's funny is um on their tiktok after i made my tiktok like i said a lot of traction came to my tiktok because i guess i put it together so well um Big w and this is funny because me and me and gunner were looking at their tiktok earlier Someone that liked my video, like my TikTok, they went into Sora's comment section of that video and they said, get bro his pants instead of restocking. And it wasn't even a reply to my original thing. Like bro went out dude. of his way to say that. Like, dude, whoever, that guy, dude, bro. whoever Eva is, get this man a fucking gold star for being a goat. Like, holy shit. And like, I'm no fucking, I'm no fucking celebrity online. So that was, that was kind of crazy to me, but yeah, honestly, 
my thing of Sora is, and I said this in my most recent one that I talked about them in, is I will definitely order from Sora once they start actually being communicative because your their communication skills are dog shit, straight up dog shit. Um, even their mod, I was in their fucking general chat of their Discord, pretty much saying like, "Oh yeah, I've bought from fucking numerous other brands, and literally your brand is the only one that I have to reach out numerous times." And you know what the mod says to me hmm, after me business. saying that? They said, "Congrats." That's literally all wow. they said. They said, "Congrats." What a, shit, what a shitty attitude, bro. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I get it. Like, you're not someone that actually works for Sora. You're just a moderator on a Discord. But like, really? That's how you're gonna fucking act? No way you're meat riding Sora. Well, like, I mean, the thing is, even if he's just a moderator, he's still a representative of the company. Like, I don't fucking care if he actually gets paid by them or not. He's a representative, and. You know, I know that Alex is going to be agreeing with me on this. I know that you've probably already unfollowed them, but like I've unfollowed them. I don't care anymore. Like I'm, I I don't want to see their product because I again, no matter what, it does look very good and it is very. It's a very good product. Um, like I'm gonna wear my my power hoodie when it comes in. Like I'm going to be wearing it constantly because it looks great. Um, but I'm not gonna support a company. And also, like they're pretty expensive too. Like I don't think that. There's definitely worse. Like, Animato is, like, really expensive. But he also is, like, the best damn hoodie maker I've ever seen in my life. And his embroidery is, like, chef's kiss. Like, he has 4K embroidery. It's insane. Um, So... Uh, but like they, it's just, it's not worth the wait. It's just, it's not worth the wait. It's not worth the hassle. It's not worth the not knowing because I, I can guarantee you, cause there's something that kind of happens with these situations. And I guarantee you that this has happened multiple times. There's people who will buy things online and just kind of forget about it. And I bet you, I'm willing to bet my bottom dollar that there are people who have ordered from them and not gotten their product. Because they forgot about it, Sora forgot about it, and there's people That's who just up. literally never got their product because it's ha- like I know pe- not specifically for Sora, but I know like instances that that's happened to people. No, it's it's happened. Um, I've seen it in the Discord server. Like people have had to reach out in there because they're like, "Hey, um, I've had an issue with like X, Y, and Z with like a third part. I don't know if it's a third party, the shipper, how it works, but like even." I've seen people in the Discord server in the order increase say that shit. So yeah, I'm not shocked. That's just like how do you how do you like as a as a quote unquote small business, how the fuck do you live with yourself after like after like reading something like that? Like if you're I I don't think that that's very honest to, you know, because not I mean not that they're not a small business, because like I would still say, like, you know, you say the word Sora clothing and people are like, wait a minute, that goofy little little femboy from uh kingdom hearts has a clothing brand um and like so it's not like they're well known or anything like that like no 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 no, no. let's that but let me get let me tell you one thing liam let me tell you one thing you know that fucking guy that on that's on fucking mr beast's like crew that i sometimes say that i'm like yeah this guy annoys me the fucking carl jacobs guy he owns a sora shirt he owns one. I've seen it in a fucking Mr. Beast video. Like, no, no shot. I'm not fucking kidding. So, yeah, no. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Actually, yeah, hold up. Hold up. Hold like, up. No, they're not at the point where they're like a tiny little brand that no one's fucking heard of. Like, no, you've got fucking like celebrities wearing your shit. Like, I, yeah. I don't think they have the right to call themselves a small brand. Like, if you want to say a medium brand, like where they're not small, but they're not like insanely big either. Yeah, you're not like, you're not Nike or anything like that. Yeah, but like, you're not. They are you're not a fucking, Mini Maru. <laughs> they are up there with some slate when it comes to like really big anime brands. Like I don't think they're gonna be ones that you'd see at a convention like New York Comic Con like that. What was that one that we saw? Was it Spark Trends? Or like what was that brand that we saw? Um, that yes. Were, like, no. No. Oh fuck. Uh, Atsuko. Atsuko. Yeah. Like they're they're not like that big either. But like they're they're pretty much getting there with how big and popular they are but it's just fucking crazy to me because they just don't fucking do that good when it comes to communicating it's so bullshit yeah 
Like I said, man, I, I, like, I almost promise you that they're run by just a bunch of teenagers. Like, there's no, there's no business level, like, there's no level of business intelligence. And the other thing, too, that, like, just, it's just, it, I can see it in the way that they portray their business. You know, it's literally just like, oh, okay, because this is how they'll always announce it. Like, I'm going to take an example of because now that I kind of know this, because some slight also has they actually have like a literal sponsor through one of the the running back of the Miami Dolphins, uh, some slight. Uh, they actually have like licensed shorts through him, and he is like a representative of some slight clothing. Um, but some slight they will like a month in advance, like because this is the other thing I don't like about Sora, a clothing company should give you time to be like okay i need to have money for this product with sora it's like okay i just so happen to have money and they've announced this like that video was like oh restock tomorrow like out of fucking nowhere they're like oh these pants are getting restocked tomorrow and i'm like okay what if i don't have money then what then what sora clothing um and so like there's not very good business etiquette and like but with some slight they just started leaking their next wave and like that's coming out in like a month and a half. So it's like, okay, get your, get your pockets ready. Get your doubloons prepared boys, because we're coming, we're, we're coming for your wallets and they're not going to live. Trust me. Um, but yeah, like they don't have like this level of business intelligence. Like it's just like, Oh, big restock coming in tomorrow. Oh, come and get it. And it just seems like they're very like in the moment thinking they're not trying to, worry about the past or the future they're just living for the moment and they're living in the now um they're just a mess like they are a mess and if it wasn't for the fact that they dropped very good looking product they would be very very screwed like they drop very you know the kind of stuff that they that they have isn't really something you can get anywhere else and that's the big thing about it is it reminds me of like of yeah just like that like very like authentic japanese streetwear that doesn't look like it came out of the back of a hot topic clearance section and so that's what they have going for them but i don't i don't know man they they gotta they gotta figure something else out because i i just i'm not interested in shopping with them anymore but i also don't know how they could regain my trust like that's the other thing that's difficult about this too is like because I I can't know that they've changed their etiquette until I buy from them again, but they haven't given me an incentive to do that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. To wrap to wrap things up of this, here's what I'm gonna say. I think Sora is a really cool company with their designs, their concepts. I genuinely think they're very unique designs. Um, and I would totally love to buy from them again after like these pants come in, but. I genuinely just can't fucking trust them when it comes to shipping my items in a timely manner because this is two times now that I've ordered from them and they just don't fucking... They, they don't go by the 35 business day that they try and say because mm -hmm. I've just... I haven't gotten my shit in a 35 business day. and I, I mean, Liam clearly hasn't either and other people in the Discord haven't, so why should I trust this brand when they can't even fucking stick to what they say? Yeah, um, and... and usps had to be like oh hey buddy you're getting a package from them tomorrow and i'm like oh what <laughs> so Wait, what <laughs> but yeah that's uh that's pretty much all i want to talk about with that just i hope one day they learn and i can actually buy from them again because i would love to if they do a code geos drop and i'm not buying that then damn they're i don't know that would, that would suck but anyway um the main thing you guys probably are here for that you're probably waiting for today to hear about is the the fucking guy that's on the left side of your screen right now. I would call him a silly little guy, but I'm sure the internet would probably, probably fucking light me on fire for saying that. Um, And l l let's talk about it. Let's talk about it, because I'll give you guys a little lore breakdown. Um, Liam here, did you get to do a little bit of research? Like, are you, f are you familiar with him now? Um, I would still say I have very, very loose knowledge of him. I, I wouldn't say it's anything crazy or impressive. Okay. I have very basic knowledge. I watched like a 10 minute video. I'll give you the basic little knowledge about him. So the guy we have on the left side of our screen here, this, this is too mad. Too mad is, or I should say was a YouTuber that pretty much made 
The big thing I saw him get big off of was Overwatch content. Back in the day, he would do these, like, Overwatch Lucio videos. I I honestly thought they were really good videos. Um, and then from there, he went on to make Skype content. Or, sorry, not Skype content. I say that because this one meme is, like, the one that's in the thumbnail. Where he's like, "I right, girl, I'll see you tomorrow. Or some shit like that. And then he fucking falls over comically. Um... But he did a bunch of things where he goes into, like, the Zoom classes and he, like, acts like a fucking goober. Like, a bunch of shit like that. He made a whole video talking about Keemstar, why Keemstar is a fucking rat and, like... Or, no, I think he called him a cockroach. I think that's what it was. Yeah, I think he got a, I think he called him a cockroach. Um, and then just overall, like, Too Mad was... Had a really good thing going on for him. Like, he just kept getting popular and popular and popular. Like... I was, and he was a fucking dude that's around, like, me and Liam's age. Like, literally, bro is from the fucking 2000s. It's kind of crazy. Um, and yeah, he just kept growing and growing and growing. And eventually, he got himself into drugs. And from there, uh, not good things. He started acting like a tweaker. He po- He fucking schizo posted on Twitter on a daily basis. Um, a lot of things happened to this one girl, like, I want to say last year at some point, where he was just being really fucking inappropriate and not, like, respecting boundaries. Um, it's just overall, like, drugs really fucked this guy up. And ultimately it led to his demise, and he passed away, I want to say last week at some point. Obviously mm-hmm. we don't know the certain date, because he was, I guess, dead for, like, a couple of days because no one checked in on him um but yeah so that's that's what happened to him and the weird part about this is you know sometimes you hear about a celebrity or someone dying and you know people are like mourning them they're like oh i'm gonna miss this person blah blah blah. this is like one of the first cases where i've just seen people online genuinely celebrate someone's death and it it's a it's a really fucking weird feeling. It it really is. Um, and the first one of the first things I saw after I saw like the tweet announcing his death is this one guy going and saying, "Oh, now that Two Mad is dead, I can finally talk about this whole thing that happened with me and him, where he was gonna fucking murder me. Uh, he did like a bunch of fucking different crimes. Like, what was it? He tried to murder him. He tried to want he wanted to take out multiple lives while behind the wheel and like." high on drugs um he wanted to do something with a 13 year old girl in a mental hospital like a bunch of really fucking crazy outlandish Dude, that's shit. Still weird shit and then crazy. after that tweet came out a bunch of other people were coming out saying oh i'll join in on this oh i can i can attest to this really fucking crazy shit um mm-hmm. it just really blew me away because i'm like i mean i'm not at the point where I'm going to say, like, I hold YouTubers to a pedestal because, I mean, time and time again, a lot of my fucking YouTubers I've watched, like, Sky does Minecraft, shit like that, they've just turned out to be really fucking shitty people. And so I'm at the point where I'm like, I mean, yeah, this is pretty fucking upsetting, but I'm not too shocked. But at the same time, it's fucking Twitter. This guy did not preside, he did not give any fucking receipts for anything he said. It was just like, oh yeah, I went through this, and this is why you should believe me. I don't know. Like, he didn't really explain why you should believe him, other than like, oh yeah, this is what I've been doing. So, it's it's very fucking weird. And you have all these people who are clowning on him for dying. They're like, lol, he died playing Overwatch 2, which I'll admit, that is kind of fucking funny. Imagine imagine you dying in the last the game. The game is so bad it killed him, bro. The <laughs> game is so bad it killed him. Like, it, it is really sad, though. In the aspect of, like, imagine you're his parents, dude. Like, I would be, I would be fucking devastated hearing my fucking child died from a fucking overdose at 23. And, and from dying playing Overwatch, too. That's also kind of unfortunate. I'd be upset about that. But, okay, okay. Jokes aside, like, I don't know. It, it is fucked in that scenario. But, man, if he actually did all this evil shit, it is really fucking insane that he kind of got away with a lot of this shit and all of it being like unheard of until literally right after he died literally i had no idea he was he made like like i don't watch fucking too mad i'm not a too mad follower or subscriber like i've 
I've literally like seen maybe like clips like like one clip every, every six months like on like you get what i'm saying like just how you like see shit on the internet like you know what i'm saying like it's i'm not even like a oh you know like what that. he used to do the you laugh you knew. lose too like i remember watching yeah, that in yeah, vcs yeah, in 2022 that. like that was another thing he did but yeah no it's just fucking crazy but what, what were you saying but no i was just saying like i never knew that he was a shitty person i mean i just Honestly, I just thought he was annoying and everyone hated him because I remember like he did like have his stint of being like like a popular like one of his like one of the most popular streamers I think or like content creators or like you know what I'm saying. And then I saw like this like a few like maybe like half a year ago I saw this video of him like in a car like in the pas- passenger seat fucking kicking the windshield and whining like a little fucking baby. And I was like, okay, this dude's washed. And then I like forgot about it. <laughs> I'm like, bro, don't wait. Like, holy, like, bro, it's probably, and now looking back, that's just probably drug related, bro. Like, mm. yeah, man, I, that's fucking I'm, weird. I, I never really watched Too Mad, so I'm, I'm kind of viewing this from a very unbiased, like, I guess I should say unbiased perspective, because I'm also, I'm one that, like, just because people say that, oh, this person was evil and terrible, I am like, okay, proof, and then they're like, he just was and i'm like okay all right whatever and i i um i also don't want to i don't want to try to like this like i if i don't also i'm not so i'm not big on if bad things happen to people i don't want to just dismiss it but at the same time there are instances of people just completely making stuff up for attention and i'm also not big on making arguments about a dead man because a dead man can't defend himself yeah and like because this is exactly this is exactly what i will tell anyone in terms of like specifically like uh, the best example i can think of is michael jackson um where you know after his death there was a lot of stuff about him that like is granted a lot more evidence and a lot more grounded um but not provable per se and it's like is it right maybe probably but can he defend himself no so like you know if this if these things happen to these people my condolences to them but out of complete unbiasedness and just out of like just general you know just being like pushing aside my want to have empathy for people and taking an analytical approach I, I need to only believe what I can actually be demonstrated happened. And most of the stuff that's pointed towards him, he seemed like a shitty guy, but like, I don't know if he was a egregious person or a criminal. Well, I can't say that. I mean, I, I lo- it depends on your stance on drugs, I guess. But like, I don't know. It's just, it's just tough because uh, people are claiming he's a pedophile too. Yeah, yeah, everyone says everyone's a pedophile these days. Who the fuck cares? I mean, not, that uh, <laughs> came off half like half wrong, but like, you know, it's like again, he's a dead guy. What are you gonna like? What is he gonna say? No, I'm not. Like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm gonna need to see some receipts, and when I see some receipts, I'll start believing. Yeah, what's interesting is this other guy. Um, he also about- also isn't. Because this is this is something that's kind of like I don't know I don't know. wasn't it like he was twenty two and wasn't the person that they're saying that he was talking to, um, uh, like seventeen or sixteen or something like that. I don't I don't remember the exact ages. Know. Like I don't know. Like are are we talking about the person from like a year or two ago? Um, I think yeah. Because I'm uh this is this is the kind of like that's. That's like my my sniff detector when I kind of know there's assery going on because 16 and 17, not to say that one is worse or better than the other, has a completely different terminology. So if you're going to call a guy a pedophile for being a 22-year-old being into a 16-year-old, still illegal, still wrong, still awful, but different terminology and that's like that's like my 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 whiff detector for bullshit because like if it's if you've really looked into this and you really understand like these things, you would know that that's not what that is. I think it be- it begins with an A. I forget what it, what the specific terminology is, but there's a different word for that. It's still illegal. It's still a crime, but it's different. It's it's called something else. 
Is it like Romeo and no, not Romeo and Juliet. That's not it, right? No, there's like a different like when there's like when it's still underage, but there's not as much of an age gap, and they're sixteen or seventeen. It's not called pedophilia. It's called something else. But I'll I'll have to. It's like because there's like a, I you're just charged less. Be you're charged for less because like a sixteen or seventeen year old could technically have more of like a, like I don't want to say free will. Because again, it's still wrong and it's still legal, but there's more of like a there's more consciousness, I guess, is the is like the legal look of it. I'll have to try to find the word. Yeah, like I I, I get what you mean. Um, you know, there was a guy that came out. I want to say it was yesterday or the day before, and he was like the roommate of two Matt or something. His name is Jamie Pine. Um, and a lot of people were saying that. Two men had like these guns that he was like using or like he was threatening people with guns or something. And this guy, Jamie Pine, I, like I said, I guess he was like a roommate or something. He goes out and he shows that two men didn't have like an actual gun. It was a fucking airsoft gun. And it like shows it pretty well that like, yeah, these are fucking airsoft, airsoft pellets. Like they're not actually fucking real bullets. And he keeps going on and on. And he's like saying like, oh yeah, like I have a bunch of evidence that's like, yeah, a lot of the shit that you're saying is not fucking true. So, which I, I mean, I, maybe there is some parts of it that are definitely true, but I don't know. And then you got fucking Justin Minx, who's also being a fucking weirdo. Which, uh, so the word it, I'm going to spell it out because I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong. It's E P H E B O philia. Um, that's that's what okay. I'm going to say. Ephobophilia. That's that's the specific terminology for when someone is between the ages of of 15 and under whatever your state's legal age is. That is that is what the terminology is, because there's like a, at 15, you can get a job. You can like you're hitting the point where you can start making like responsible choices. And there's less of a chance of it being that you were. Um, I'm speaking completely legally here because you're still fucking weird for doing this. Yeah. Um, but the, the legal part of it is that like, you're, that person is able to make some semblance of like, you know, responsible choices because they're able to have a job legally or they're able to drive legally or they're able to do this legally. So they have like more legal responsibilities are starting to form more into an adult, but they're still not fully an adult yet. So there's like a, there's a separation there. And that's like kind of my, my, I don't want to say my BS, you know, my BS detector, but like, if you care about these kind of things, you would take the time to know that there's differences in these situations. And like, you have to, I don't know. I just, I don't I I don't like it when people just kind of throw this shit out. It's just it's really it's really stupid to me. And there's a lot of idiocy to it because people just I think people just kind of like to accuse people of this. This is like kind of their go to. Yeah, that's what uh that's what happens with dream. I mean, dream like I I don't know. I don't know for certain. Maybe there's some truth to the dream shit, but like I'm pretty sure he literally made like a video like showing that yeah i he wasn't a fucking pedophile and people are still calling him one to begin with just because some fucking random attention seeker on twitter said yeah this guy's a pedophile which i mean i i think i'll, I'll still make the meme because it's kind of funny just it is of, funny it is kind of funny but but yeah i i don't know like it kind of sucks but once the, you the big thing is dream is alive to defend himself this guy isn't like i don't yeah. know man and it's all like you know 10 seconds after his death was announced well, actually, I had an encounter with him, and he's a pedophile. And I'm like, and he tried to murder a bunch of people. Like, bro, what? Yeah, it's just like there's a there's an extent to it where there are people who are actually scared of certain things happening to them, and they will come forth with these pieces of evidence afterward because they feel safe now. However. You could also use that as that doesn't make it right. That just means that people have gone forth with information for that reason. That's not proof. That's just knowing that that happens. Yeah. Um, I think the big thing I really want to talk about when it comes to like this whole thing is just, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like people are so fucking cool, dude. Like people on Twitter, like these people are so fucking unhinged. Like, 
honestly, I don't know, like I said, I don't know how true this shit about him is. Like, we don't have the fucking exact proof saying, yeah, this is exactly what he did, whatnot. But man, I remember seeing one person saying, like, man, I'm sad that he passed away. He was an inspiration for me to start YouTube. And you got these fucking, like, dumbasses that go in the replies to this guy. And they're like, you know he's a pedophile, right? You know he's a fucking evil person. You know this, this, and that. Like, hey, fucking moron. Don't you know you can be inspired by someone, like, based on their art and not who they are as a person? Like, how fucking stupid do you have to be? Like, genuine bot replies. But not even just that. Like, people that are making the memes. Like, I think the memes... I, I, I won't lie. Like, I'd be lying if I said I didn't laugh at some of these memes. But, like... Man, dude, the amount of people that are just, like, fucking... I, I, I think I sent you this, Liam, but I'm like, this reminds me of fucking One Piece in Wano, the smile fruits, dude. It's like everyone laughing at someone that died, but, like, the, instead of them, like, being forced to laugh, like, these people are legitimately, like, laughing, like, unironically. It's, it's crazy to me. Like, you feel me? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm picking up what you're laying down. Like, just... like, I don't know if it's a bad analogy or what, but I feel like it's pretty fucking accurate. No, I, I'm picking up what you're laying down. I'm, I'm on your wavelength. I'm very much like, I'm kind of, I'm kind of in the same boat as you. Like, I, I don't, I don't necessarily like, because the other, the other thing is too that I, I am not very big on is like if you, and I, this isn't me trying to blame the victim because I don't want to blame the victim for anything, especially if these are real. Like, if this is stuff that actually happened and he actually is a terrible person, then that's fine but if you are a victim of something and something is happening to you where i would want that person to seek justice while that person is alive rather than ruin like like you know go after and ruin a legacy because like if a, like a legacy ruined isn't really like a legacy of infamy is still a legacy and if you like for for an example um you know now like e e edp now has to live with his constant like with the consequences to his actions because somebody was able to actually like go through and prove these things that actually happened and again sometimes things are a lot harder to prove than others so, like this is not me blaming the victim like i'm not trying to put this on them but like seek justice while the person is alive so that they can because well, sometimes people just like Sometimes people just need that hard kick in the right direction. Sometimes the justice system just fucking ruins everything, but it's kind of a gamble, but like, you know, I mean, I don't know. Like I, I wish that these, like that people would be, I wish it was easier for people to actually like come forth and like actually present this information so that we could uh, ignore and get past this just malarkey of after someone dies of just like these trauma dumps because it's terrible it just it does nothing good for anyone and then all your like your social space your online social space is filled with these people yapping about negativity and like you know maybe there is some good things to remember about the person and you know maybe someone just didn't like him and so now they're just making up these bad things maybe there are real bad things but now we'll never know now like we're never actually going to know if he was a bad person or not so now it's going to be like this divide between the, those who loved too mad and those who will defend him forever and those who hate too mad and those who will hate him forever when we could have actually had ourselves an answer and we were we we didn't we never got that we're never going to because there was no capacity to actually get these things proven while he was alive. Yep, pretty much. Damn. He just never like even if, even if these things were real, if like what people are playing is real, bro's just never gonna suffer the consequences of his actions. So, I mean, not not that they knew he was gonna fucking die. Obviously, like no shit. But like, yeah, right, right. Apparently, it was like an ongoing investigation that ended because he died. I don't know how long that investigation has been going on for, but like, I don't know, man. I feel like I I, I will say one thing though, and that this is something that like inevitably the big problem with this kind of stuff is, is that I think that this mostly started as a YouTube investigation, and uh, the police will not arrest somebody on the grounds of a youtube investigation because they don't think it's a reliable source 
And that is actually the only reason why EDP never served jail time. So yeah, that's first of all, we, justice system. What the fuck? <laughs> like yeah, we have knew. the we have the why ability to make a to citizen's jail. arrest. Why is something being a YouTube video mean that it can't be used as evidence? Like there, EDP being in prison is something that should happen immediately because like he could harm other people. He's out there now. Like. That's like that's that's probably the big takeaway is like why the fuck is the justice system like oh it's a YouTube video well I don't care anymore like what the fuck because like literally like do your research do your math guys like EDP is a literal person walking around right he is not in jail he is literally not in jail because the justice system does not think that a YouTube video is grounds to arrest somebody even though the evidence is literally there there is physical evidence. They don't care. They won't take it. Yeah, that that's honestly one of the stupidest things about the EDP case. The fact that Brogan just walks free because, oh, yeah, these fucking dumbasses made a YouTube video and just didn't go and, like, just get him, like, right to the jail. Like, that's what they should have done. I but, mean, they should have done that, but, like, holy but, but, fuck, like, But, yeah, like, that, that too, like, they should have... <laughs> That video should have been evidence incriminating him, and that should have gotten him in jail, but I guess... Nope. They wanted the... They said, yeah, as these people are fucking making a video about it instead of taking it seriously. We don't care. Like, what? Shit makes Such an owl, sense. dude. Justice system is so bad, man. <laughs> yeah, so shit, shit. Shit is fucked. <sighs> what can you fucking do? Of course. What can you do? Yeah, don't I worry, don't guys. Our, gener our generation will fix it, assuredly. Surely. We got this, boys. 20 years, America will be maybe all right. <laughs> Hoping and praying. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I. Gutter, you're, you're from Hawaii. You got to be the next Obama. What? I'm not from <laughs> here, bro. I'm not from here. You're in Hawaii. You got to be the next Obama, bro. Bro, how? I'm not even, uh, I'm not even like that, bro. Obama, we need you back. This is a this is a call out. Obama, we need you back, bro. Get Third back term, in bro. there. Third term. Bro, get back in there. I'm not even a I'm not a politician, bro. <laughs> bro, I was like, I'm not into that. I'm just making beats. I'm I'm not Yo, here trying to, I'm trying to compete with fucking Dr. Giggle Touch. Hey, okay. Dr. Giggle Touch. Ain't no way. Nah, I'm trolling. But dude, yeah, I don't know. Long long story short of this. Honestly, I'm sure it's a, it's still a developing story, so I'm sure eventually we probably will figure out more shit about this, maybe, hopefully. I mean, we're never going to hear two miles aside, but, like, I don't know. Maybe if these fucking, this guy that made the day one allegations, maybe he'll post more evidence. But I'm not even really seeing any YouTubers cover this. Maybe because they don't want to cover a somewhat sensitive topic. Or right. because there's not enough information or what. But, I mean, yeah, shit is kind of wild. Damn. Yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much all I've <laughs> all I brought to the table for today. I don't know. Do you guys have any other things like small topics you know say before we end this? I think I'm good. I don't. I don't. Well, the one thing I will say is, uh, Sora, get your shit together, dude. Do better, Sora. Do better, Sora. Tisk tisk. Y'all, you guys got, you got to get shit together like ASAP. And get me in there. Hire me. I'll, I'll fix your company. I'll fix it overnight all my life. Get me in there. Yep. All right. Anyway, guys, thank you again. Um, Like I said, yeah. podcast, pod, another, another podcast episode, maybe next week. Oh, wait, we got to get Jordan on here. We got to get the whole squad back in here, but I don't know. Jordan's been busy. It's been hard to manage since there's four of us now, so there's gonna be some episodes where like not all of us are in here, um. But we're gonna try our best to try and get that for next week. Um, I'm thinking next week maybe we can do another special podcast episode, try and try and come up with something fun, like <laughs> instead of covering drama. How about, how about a how about a one hour yap sesh of me trying to convince the entire world that there that two things that i love very much have the most awful fucking egregious fan base but are genuinely fantastic pieces of media is one of them dead by daylight 
Uh, no, <laughs> no, no. My Hero and Has Been Hotel. Oh, oh my God. Wrap oh, it dude. up. <laughs> Take off the podcast. We need a new co-host. Yeah, my, my get it off, bro. Get it out of here. Get him out of here. All right. I will see you guys next time. Keep it virtual. Oh my and God, peace. Bro. Oh, hell no. Peace. Peace.